Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend Show. I'm Matt Lee, host for this evening. As you can see, empty chair over there. What more could we say? We're out of young commentators not here tonight. And there was a couple there last night. Great. What more could we ask for? I thought they were absolutely brilliant. Talking about the gaming, Pokemon. Um, I'm just learning about it, but I'm not going to take it up. I assure you. Plenty of you young ones, young ones out there, will definitely be taking it up, looking around for little animals. I don't know. Whatever they are. I wonder if there's any hiding in here. Well, I don't want anyone coming through the window. I know we're getting the roof done, so we've got scaffolding, so I'm sure they'll all be climbing up to try and pinch them, get them, collect them, whatever they do. But good luck to everyone who play the gaming. Not me, not for me. Maybe FIFA one day with one of the young commentators. Anyway, they're talking about dressing up for Halloween. Fingers crossed on that one that they all get the good uniforms and I'm sure we'll have a bit of a laugh anyway. Okay, welcome, welcome to the show to all you listeners on SoundCloud and also all you viewers on DXTL TV, TV from the Touchlands. Well, we were out and about today. After last night, we had the young commentators. We had Oliver and Danny. They were brilliant and we're looking forward. Well, I was saying that it was cancelled for next week because it's half term. But young Dan may want to come in and do a show with me. I'm not too sure whether any of the others, but that's good. Good for us. Knows that we're, or I'm knowing that we're doing things right. Not too sure whether Wayne can do it because I think we're changing the day now. Yes, the day is going to be changing. So um, possibly on a Thursday, but the show will carry on on a Friday. Are we going to work that out? We'll let you know, no doubt, next week. Okay, as we say, we were out and about, and I was walking around North Liverpool JFL. It was great to see plenty of referees, all young referees there today. Brilliant. No problems whatsoever. They all turned up. And yeah, I'm just trying to think. The experienced referees, mm, they didn't. But um, yeah, the young referees, it was great to see everyone and a couple of female referees there as well what more would you ask for in a junior football league i'm all for it they were great on the day they were happy on the day all the kids were playing the football everyone was mingling in talking away to managers watching some great football and there was blackburn eagles young game girls team there taking on uh, it could have been finn harps i think it was finn harps there and what a game that was once again i think it ended up four three but the girls are brilliant, they get stuck in, they get fouled, they just get up, they all run. But you can see the team working, each and every one of them. Great to watch. And you just get hooped to see them playing the lads against the lads. Brilliant. And I'm sure the managers, both managers, will have been happy with the game and the results. Well, maybe the results. But it's great to watch that, I must admit. They look great in all their red kit as well. Looks like it. Sometimes there's some passion there that comes from them. It looks like Liverpool, to be honest. Really does, but the real eager, real committed. That's what we want in grassroots football. And I was, I was walking around. I must have walked around twenty times. Um, talking to parents, letting on to parents. Um, everyone was just happy. I didn't hear any animosity whatsoever. Well done to Bob and Connor, Julie as well. Working Bailey, we were working really, really hard in that league to make sure that the the walking around and the talking to mums, dads, parents, anything. They see on towards, they approach it, it's great. What an easy league for the referees to officiate in. I must admit, I enjoyed it today. Got off before the last game, I think I did. Um, obviously because there was a simple reason that I had to watch Liverpool. Yes, I had to go and get prepared and watch that, get myself ready for it. And as I expected, it was around about 4 or 5 now, that's what I... I thought would be the scoreline, it could have been a lot more to be honest. But hey, Mo Salah again with one of those speciality goals, unreal. Liverpool give him what he wants, TMA, making the most highest paid player there. And I noticed he touched the badge to the fans, so maybe there's a big deal coming through for Mo Salah. Unreal he is, and it was brilliant the way he was spreading the ball around, looking for movements, looking for players off the ball as well. And he told me the world's a good and we fantasy team, because I had him as my captain. So it's one of those things on a Saturday, you're all rushed trying to do your fantasy as well, make sure you don't leave any of those players out. So there you go, it was in my fantasy team, I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the North Liverpool JFL, and last week they were really, oh, they, were, they battered with the lack of referees, 
this week, I think Connor put a message out on his WhatsApp group, and everyone's answered to it. They all turned up. Nice to see. Except uh, I think one or two. I think they only had one game where a manager stood in. But yeah, it's a good league. You've got a good league there going, and I must admit, I think all the referees are happy, and I'm really happy as I'm walking around because I'm just enjoying the football, and you're standing there talking to parents who are enjoying it as well. Even the kids, the kids are all talking to me. It was nice to see little Isaac come back into me once again and tell me all about his result that they won 8-0 and he kept a clean sheet. Wow, what more could you ask for? Isaac, my little friend, he turns up every Saturday to come in and see me. Couple of left to mark there and it's nice to know that the youngster is up and playing football once again. He was going to leave once, wasn't he? But he, um, it's great. I was talking to his dad, Adam, as well. And he was telling me all about him, that it was enjoyable. But it was a little bit chilly today, I must admit. Glad I put my fleece on and my jacket on, just to keep a little bit warm. I don't know when it's going to be the same thing tomorrow, but whatever you are, out and about, it's going to be loads of respect. And it's nice to see um, a full list of referees, as I say. <coughs> Excuse me. Have a drop of water in a minute. And hopefully, with the Walton Curtail GFL tomorrow, it's the same story. I think it was okay last week anyway. They seem to have a lot of referees covering that league as well. And there's some great football. I've got a lot on tomorrow. Dear me, what a busy Sunday I have. It's unreal. Dear me, already I'm talking about oh, just loads, loads and loads on. I know which column for all the very, very best with his charity game tomorrow. <coughs> I have to have a drop of water, do you mate? Take away throat. Excuse me. And for the noise as well to all our listeners as well. Right down the microphone there. <coughs> but it's one of those things, you're out and about and you come back and you're thirsty and your throat, you've been doing all the talking. Thankfully not the shouting. And just enjoying yourselves. But as I say, Colin Fulton with his um, charity game for breast cancer tomorrow doing an absolutely fantastic job. Well done, Col. Wish you all the very, very best. I'm going to try my very, very best to try and get down here if I possibly can. Even if it's only for 10 minutes, I need to do something. I have to, but I've got that much on. is unreal. I didn't expect it. Um, but no one, Colin, you don't have to wish him all the best. Everything goes on. Kidore. He's got a lot of support and everyone's been chipping in for him as well. He's doing a great job, a sterling job. Col, brilliant. Unbelievable work you're doing there, mate, and I just hope that's not going to be one of those results. Is it's just going to be a laugh and a joke, and I think we'll go back to the pub after it as well to make sure that they all have a nice, enjoyable meal and a drink, and I'm sure they're all watching the Everton game as well. That's going to be a tough one, Everton West Ham. I was made up with Liverpool against Watford. Watford look a little bit dodgy. Um, last ten minutes, I think, one or two chances before Firmino got his hat trick. Why did I do him in my fantasy team? I thought, to be honest, he wasn't playing because of the Brazilians and the situation. I got mixed up there. But I had Mo Salah as my captain, and that was brilliant in itself. Well, we um, we need to get on to. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm inundated with that much going on. Just got myself a a, a new car as well, and you know the chopping and changing the insurance. I've got to get on to that. I've got to make sure that I'm covered because I only got the, the five day cover to take over and then I've got to ring me insurance company to change over the car. I think if anyone has got a car out there, you know about the rigmarole and all that goes with it. And it's just a nightmare, a total nightmare. But you've got to get on to it. And I've got to get on to it as soon as I possibly can as well because it's all online now. You can't pick a phone up and talk to anyone. <sighs> what is going on? We've got a phone here. Never hear it ringing, which is good when we're on our show. But once I start giving it out, I think we're going to get a little bit battered, so I'll have to move it from outside the studio because people will be ringing me up knowing that I'm doing a show on time at all and get their voice on as well. So we have to move that out. Anyway, um, as I say, good luck to Colin and everyone who's participating in the game tomorrow. I don't know who he's got, uh, what plays he's got, what teams he's got, who's playing who, but I'm sure Colin will be on after and we'll find out, but all the very best, and if you can get down there, and 
I'm not too sure what it is. I've forgotten what it is. I'm sorry, Col. Um, but anyway, you can donate to Colin Fulton as much as you possibly can for his uh, breast cancer charity that's going on tomorrow. So fingers crossed that all goes well. Without a doubt, it will go well. If you'd have made it a Saturday, Col, if you'd have made it today, I'd have personally been there. Not a problem. I would have just left the league today and just gone to watch that game of football and spent the day with you. Uh, not in the pub, but I would have spent the day with you and helped out. So I'm sure everything is going to go well for you there. Fingers crossed it will do. And I'm sure it will do. Anyway, um, I'll give you a little bell a little bit later, wishing you all the luck. But as I say, I will try my very, very best. It's not that I've been keeping away from it. It's just that everything has cropped up and I think you'll know you know where I'm coming from as well. I'd be there if I could be. Um, I just realised there, I pulled the, the green screen down so everyone can make little pictures on me. Hopefully they don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, it's been brilliant. It's been a pleasure. And it was great to report back about the North Liverpool JFL and plenty of referees. Loads of respect, as I say. They'll be back again next week, no doubt. We want the same tomorrow. We're out and about in the Walton Caretail JFL. If you can make sure that on and off the field of play, you support the referee, encourage the referee, encourage the kids. They only want encouragement. They want to enjoy their game of football, win, lose or draw. It's about the kids enjoying themselves. And obviously, you've got to adhere to the laws of the game and you know just play that. Don't argue back with the referee. Parents, please just applaud the kids, encourage the kids and also encourage that referee who's there to keep that game in order. We've had enough now of referees leaving. I've been looking on social media, and I must admit, all over the country, I've never seen so many posts about referees getting verbal abuse from the touchlines. But it's not in the kids' games, by the way. This is in the amateur games, this is in the adult games, and I'm seeing a lot more referees. You've got to be thick-skinned to be a referee, we all know that. But there's no need to start shouting verbal abuse and chasing referees and even threatening them and what we're seeing on social media referees being attacked no good no go please let's not edit let it happen at grassroots football if you think you're an IRA parent manager coach spectator please do yourself a massive favor just stay away if you can from the games itself and you're not doing just yourself a favor you're doing all the team a favor and the league's a favour as well. The fixture secretaries will be absolutely made up. And just think, you could go there and cause the biggest load of trouble in the world and that would be the most, the most regrettable thing that you've ever done in your life. So do yourself a massive favour. Stay away. Get someone else to go and support the child or the team until you've calmed down and you've got to anger management, basically, because that's what it is. When you start accusing the referee of losing you the game, Giving decisions against it, it's not there. You just got to stand back. If the referee does make a mistake, just grin and bear it. It's one of those things you just got to get on with it. It's not going to be the be all and end all. And I know many of you out there will just accuse that referee of doing it blatantly on purpose and causing you to lose a game or lose a goal. I know what it's like. I've been in it that many years. I can just see it. It's not the referee's fault. The referee go there, get paid, do the job that they're trained to do. They have the, they passed the course, they've got the certificates, they're there as a qualified referee, whereas the majority of spectators out there, even coaches and managers, aren't. They're not telling you what to do on your job, they're staying out of it. Why do you have to tell them? They're not telling the kids where to shoot, who to pass the ball to. So why did he get told what to do when they blow a whistle? No, it's not on. So come on, you coaches, you managers, please. Adhere to the set of rules that's in front of you. You know the laws of the game and you've got to just adhere to them and you've just got to play by that book and you've also got to yourself encourage the kids, coach the kids. That's your job. Just stick to that. And another job that you have is make sure that the parents aren't verbally abusive towards the referee. That is your job as well, whether you like it or you don't. When I was running football teams many, many years ago, I was doing exactly the same thing. I was approaching the parents to tell them to leave the referees alone and even one or two parents I asked them to leave it's unfortunate that they take the children with them 
they wouldn't go, they wanted to come all the time. But even the hardest, the hardest, we had one on a touch line and as soon as you spoke to him, he was great, he was apologetic. He realised, you know, because it's your job to make sure that those parents are supporting the kids as well and the referees. We don't want to chase referees. Many years ago, it wasn't like that. There was loads of verbal abuse, yeah, and aggressive behaviour. It's balancing itself out now. But what I'm saying is, there was loads of referees as well for every game. We had, they were everywhere. They just wanted to come. And there's loads of referees, actually, who just want to take part in it and participate and just say they're in it for grassroots football. And I know many are, and I saw one today. Told me, Malin, it was off to Watt Mall Park. Asked me how things are going. I had a chat to him. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant referee, and he really is for grassroots football, and he just wants to get involved in there week in, week out. Great referee, and hopefully I'll be seeing him at Geoffrey Humble, because he always does Joe Stones yeah, on the grass pitches, and I'm always there because there's that many games going ahead, especially on the Sunday. Yes, on the Sunday. Um, now, also, while I'm just talking about on the Sunday, if there's any teams out there who play in the Geoffrey Humble that want the Kertail Junior Football League, and under sevens, nines, eights, whatever, and I really are struggling for the kit. I haven't got a sponsor using an old kit, and please get in touch with myself, mal at don't text the line dot com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites, and let's see what we can do about trying to find you the kit. But I'll be there. I'll see you. You know, make a note of it tomorrow if you're there. Come over and see me because one sponsor, one team who was getting the sponsorship. I've managed to find someone else and let me know. So well done to Liam there and finding a sponsor. So maybe there's a, a spare place, but you've got to be struggling. We don't want you with two, three, four, five kids and go, we've got another sponsor here, but put that on a certain day. Now that doesn't happen, you have to be struggling. Come over and see me or give us a message on my email if you don't mind. Look forward to that one. Anyway. The Premier League is back on. Everton's got West Ham tomorrow. That's going to be a tough game, and I'm going to stick my neck out. I was so well. I think I even forecast five 0 today. I just knew in my bones that Liverpool would do that. But I reckon here's a forecast for you, Evertonians. Get on this one. Put your money on it. Everton two, West Ham two. That's my forecast for tomorrow. You've got to get on that one. And I just might do it myself, but I'm not insane or making you. To gamble, it's up to yourselves. I don't want to push gambling out. I really, really don't. I know. Um, I put a post up there yesterday regarding um, the lottery and people. Well, I didn't even know Radio Merseyside, our local radio station, were also promoting that because I didn't listen. So I put that out many years ago. I was talking to when we had Joe Anderson in the uh, council that we should be. He was pushing for a Liverpool lottery, and I think we should. I'd love that Liverpool lottery to come out won two pounds a ticket the majority of people would support it if they knew it was going back in to the city now i'm talking about back into the city i'm not talking about back into the council so they can support their own things and what have you and the, the biggest charities who get the money all the time i'm talking about you set up a panel and you put that lottery funding to good causes around merseyside but also put it in your pot to pay off the likes of the council bills, the likes of all the rate, rents, budgets there, people struggling, keep the bills down if we possibly can. That's what I'd like you to see. You can run your own city, and I'm sure our own city would all back us and do that. It's common sense, it really is. This 184 million that was a winner last night wasn't me, and well, hopefully it was one of you lot out there, but 184 million to one person, that should have gone to 184 people. They should have done it, drawn it 184 times and made 184 millionaires. But they don't want to do that because this country would be full of millionaires then. What would they do? How would they grind money and put people down? Wouldn't work, would it? No, it wouldn't. Anyway, I'd love your thoughts on that one. I really would. People, okay, <clears throat> they're saying you, you, you're pushing gambling. Well, it's not. It really is something to try. You don't have to do it. You really don't have to do but those people who are doing it are doing it to support their own city and the funding keep the bills down support you I'm not encouraging the gambling you know not in a million years look at it all over the place with the national lottery if that's the case they're the ones encouraging gambling not us and if it's there why can't we do it for our own city 
and keep the prices down, the cost down, and give the people who are suffering in poverty a little bit extra in their pockets. People who are homeless, we could end all that because there's that much money in the lottery. Look at it, 184 million, and then they turn around and they cap it, hold it at 184 million. It freezes, so when everyone who's having a go, including myself, probably made 200 million more of the country people trying to win that. Where does that go? Because you really, that, that money does not really go in that one month or whatever, that one year, 184 million, 200 million to all the good causes because it's only a matter of thousands. Think of it, work it out. I'd love to see just how much money is in the National Lottery bank account. Wouldn't you? Why isn't that made public? Can we find out? Anyone know? Maratontextaline.com. I'm sure we could chase that up and have a little look. In the meantime, thank you very, very much indeed. Well done to North Liverpool JFL. Well done to all the referees who took part in it. Well done to all the kids, the parents, and the managers themselves. The fixtures were brilliant. The games were brilliant. The refereeing was brilliant. What more could you ask for? Let's hope we can follow on tomorrow at the Walton Curtail or in a league wherever you are and make sure there's loads of respect, people are encouraging, no animosity toward the referees. This weekend goes with a clean bill of health and everyone has gone home happy. That's all we need. So in the meantime, we'd like to say good night. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7pm. So for myself, Mal Lee and all the team at the Grassroots Show, Don't Frost the Land, Respect Programme, hashtag Don't Bully the Ref. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Have a great evening. Put your feet up, relax, and I hope to see you tomorrow at the football. Can I go bless?